I've taken two trips to Japan in the last nine months and my experiences were incredible. Here are 20 tips that I learned on my latest trips so you avoid some of the traps that it's easy to fall into and to help you get the best experience without overloading yourself. And believe me, Japan is a very exciting place to visit and it's really easy to feel overwhelmed by everything. So let's make it easier for you to plan your trip to Japan, orient yourself if you've just arrived, or get yourself going again if you are overwhelmed by all the things you could do. If that sounds like you, let's start here. Number one, don't overload your itinerary. I completely backtracked on my original plan, which had lots of two to three to four night stays for my second trip and instead opted to do day trips based in Tokyo which I scheduled when I got to Japan according to weather and how I felt. I learned this plan for my second trip after taking a very different and itinerary packed approach for my first trip which was two days in Tokyo followed by an extremely packed seven day JR pass stretching from Shirakawa Go to Hiroshima and Miyajima and then back to Tokyo again for a final two days. If you take nothing else from my advice in this video, I would say plan to do no more than three things per day, no matter how tempting it is to do more. You'll just whiz through places without really being there and look at your photos later and have no actual memory of being present at all. You'll also feel exhausted after three days of overpacking your itinerary. So slow down, be present, and you'll get far more out of the experiences you actually choose to do. Second, if you see something you really like, buy it. You'll most likely forget where you saw it and you'll struggle to find that shop again. Third, getting around isn't as alarming or difficult as you might think. Now stations can be intimidating because they're so big and have a complex network and a bunch of platforms and things like that. I think Shinjuku station in Tokyo has around 200 exits just on its own. So be really specific when planning to meet someone by an exit. But the staff are super helpful and most signs are in English too, especially on trains. Number four, Google Translate is seriously the best. Just aim your phone camera at the sign or menu and it will translate it for you. Hapago is another good alternative with some other options out there too if you'd rather not use Google for some reason. Number five, there are public toilets everywhere and they're super clean but often there are no paper towels or hand dryers. This is another reason why Japanese people carry small handkerchiefs everywhere. Do yourself a favor and get yourself one from Daiso 2 or any convenience store shortly after arriving and bring one with you to keep it handy. Number six, the name of the game is orderly waiting to board the train. There are markings on the platform showing where you should queue and allowing space for people to get off first. This is a good thing be a good tourist and stick to the program. Seven and related to this, rules, rules, rules. They're everywhere. Social bureaucracy is everywhere you look, but you know what? It all comes together effortlessly. And again, be a good tourist, chill, and go with the flow. Eight, it's better to have an eSIM for your phone if you can. I used Aerolo on my latest trip and it worked like a charm. I had a 10 gigabyte plan and that lasted me the 12 days of my second trip and I still had 1.5 gigabytes left over. I used maybe 750 megabytes a day using apps to help me find my way, listening to the radio, taking photos, and just normal general travel usage. When I was in my hotel, I used the Wi-Fi there, just so you get an idea of how much data you might need. I've used BNE SIM 2 and that worked well. Check out my video description for discount codes for both those services. Number nine. Eating out is way cheaper than you might think and the options are just phenomenal. I could do several videos about just that, but if you budget maybe $10 for lunch and $15 to $20 for dinner, that should be plenty to get you some very decent meals. You could certainly eat well for less than that and extremely well for more. Number 10, the JR Pass is fantastic, but it's gone up a lot in price recently. Don't think that the JR Pass is a must for your travels. Consider buying separate tickets and basing yourself in maybe three different areas and taking side trips rather than staying on the move and trying to pack everything into your JR Pass time limit. Regional passes from JR are better value now, so consider those once you get to your base, if you're gonna stay in that area for four to seven days. Number 11, the Pasmo and Suica cards are brilliant. 
Pasmo can be purchased as an online card or a physical one at Haneda Airport Station and the physical Suica is available for tourists to get. For time limited tourists, Pasmo cards are really good. You pay 1500 yen for the card and it gives you 1500 yen's worth of travel or spending. The Suica cards that have become available again take off 500 yen as a card deposit but the card has a 10 year expiry date if you don't use it. Those tourist focused welcome Pasmo cards expire after 28 days. Either way, these cards can be used for paying for all manner of items and services. And if you're an iPhone user, you may be able to have those cards uploaded onto your phone, making life even easier. For me, I preferred the physical card just to help me preserve the battery life on my phone just a little bit because I was already using that a lot as it is. It also helps me to keep track and control my spending better if I have to get a physical card out to spend money. It's all too easy for the spending to rack up I find if I'm doing everything on my phone. Number 12. Be aware that you're a visitor to a society which shows mutual respect for their fellow beings. I know it's a gross generality here but I find that the Japanese tend towards being ultra polite and mannerly and I'm full of admiration for this. In fact it's something that I miss when I'm not there. Number 13. Taxis are worth it if you need to get somewhere in a hurry and they are not super expensive. You can pay with a Suica, Pasmo or any electronic money card. Short journeys only. Number 14 is that I didn't take any yen with me on my most recent trip. I just withdrew from ATMs or paid by credit or debit card or with Suica or Pasmo or something else. But be aware that many tourist sites only take cash for tickets and smaller shops and restaurants or street food vendors only take cash too. So make sure you have some on you. I got the best exchange rate deals at 7-Eleven ATMs, believe it or not, so hunt one of these down if you can. On my first recent trip last August in 2023, I got stung badly at the exchange office at Haneda Airport losing some 5 to 10 percent on the exchange deal compared to withdrawing from a 7-eleven ATM and it was a significant amount of cash so be warned. Number 15 don't eat while walking it's kind of not the done thing if you pick up a meal from a convenience store like Lawson, Family Mart or 7-eleven there's usually a designated seating area available. We're at number 16 you can skip tipping at restaurants no need to tip in Japan because it's just not the norm Show your appreciation after a great meal by smiling and saying Gochiso sama deshita to the staff. Number 17, here's something that not many people know. There's an amazing range of non-alcoholic beers available in Japan. If you're into beer but are careful about your alcohol intake, give them a try. You'll be surprised by the range and how good they are. Many restaurants serve them and they're in larger convenience stores and supermarkets too. Next up, keep in mind that you may not find many rubbish bins in Japan. If you have trash or wrappers, it's a good idea to keep a small bag with you to store them until you can find a place to dispose of them. Number 19, when people say you should book something in advance, take them seriously. In fact, just book things in advance when and where you can. It's easy and will save you a lot of queuing or perhaps being denied entry at all. For some things like Shibuya Sky at sunset, those timed entries can be sold out weeks, if not months in advance. Here are some examples. For Shibuya Sky, plan to book this a month in advance. For Team Lab Planets or Team Lab Borderless, get onto booking up to two months ahead. Same goes for Tokyo Disney, Disney Sea, and Universal Studios in Osaka. For Tokyo Skytree, the robot restaurant in Tokyo, and Sanrio Pureland, we're talking about booking two months ahead. And if you want to go to Studio Ghibli, Legoland in Nagoya or Sumo Wrestling in Tokyo, get your long term plan out because you're looking at booking the slots you want up to six months ahead. As I say, your time is precious. You're not in Japan for long, so get those booking periods into your diary. Number 20. Compared to other countries like the USA and Australia, Japan is a small nation where it won't take long to get around. That's quite a common misconception. However, remember that Japan is pretty mountainous in parts, meaning public transport options between cities may seem short on a map, but in reality can be several hours away by bus or even bullet train. So take that into account when planning out your Japan trip itinerary. Another common mistake is underestimating the distance, not just between cities, but also the attractions within those cities. 
Kyoto is a perfect example of that, where the famous must-visit temples, the bamboo forest and the golden pavilion are almost on completely opposite sides of the city, and there's only things like buses between them. The same could be said for Tokyo as well. So, in a nutshell, allow more time than you think you'll need to enjoy your first time in Japan. Don't be one of those people complaining that you're tired from rushing around and not having enough time. Again, this goes with my first point. Don't over plan, be realistic by planning your days accordingly and enjoy it all in a relaxing way. Bonus tip, this is about checking whether the thing you want to see is actually open. I found out last minute on my recent trip that part of the ropeway near Hakone was going to be closed for maintenance and then I was able to make an alternate plan before I arrived and to switch my accommodation. I'd hate to have been someone who took a special trip to Miyajima to see the Grand Tori Gate during the three years it was under wraps for renovation and I didn't find out till I got there. So make sure you check it's open before you go. Enjoy the experience. Check out my Japan vlogs and guides here for more details and tips about traveling in Japan. I'll see you there.